Why hello there my dudes, I have pried myself away in this global quarantine pandemic bonanza that we're in, I have pried myself away from Animal Crossing New Horizons to bring you this video. So, <laughs> can you tell that we're in, oh I'm just gonna get, I'm just, excuse, sorry, excuse me, I'm just gonna stand up halfway through talking. Um, can you tell that we are in quarantine, I am, I'm okay. So today, what are we talking about? We are talking about Project 10 Pan. So I remember eons ago, this was quite a big thing on the internet, Project Pan, basically using up the beauty products that you have. And I feel like in our eco-conscious 2020, it has made a bit of a, a comeback. I've seen a couple of people talking about it. Uh, and also, particularly right now, as I sit to you within the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, I feel a lot of people, including myself, feel a little bit guilty is maybe the wrong word, but I don't know how to feel about potentially buying new products because, you know, helping businesses out in this period, but also unnecessary non-essential products. Anyway, you might miss shopping and you might want to go shop your stash and pick out 10 products uh, that you want to use up. And that is what I have done right here, right now. And yeah, I thought I'd share them with you. They're mainly makeup. I didn't want to pick stuff that I would just use up anyway. Like, I didn't want to be like, here's my bottle of shower gel. You know, I, I wanted to pick stuff that I could easily have sat in my collection for years on end. Some of it I have. Um, and there's also a variety of different reasons. It's mainly makeup, but I do have uh, a couple skincare products and a hair care product to talk about as well. So let's get cracking with number one. It's the one and only hair product that I have. And it is by Philip Kingsley. This is their elasticizer, which is a like hair mask for your hair that you put on before you shampoo it. And as you can see, this bottle is as big as my head. Uh, this is, I think, a liter. Yeah, a thousand milliliters. So yeah, it's a whole liter of it. So that's quite a lot. With this product, you definitely save a lot with the more that you buy, like the bigger volume that you buy. Uh, this particular one is from like the QVC beauty deal of the month. Uh, my mum typically buys it for me every year. So thanks mum if you're watching. Uh, but the reason why I wanna use this up and I'm sort of thinking about it and having it on my mind to use up is not because I dislike the product or whatever. Um, I'm also fairly certain that Philip Kingsley is cruelty free. By the way, if you missed my January vlog where I talk about it, I am trying my best to become cruelty free this year with uh, cosmetics. But also in this video, you will see some products that are no longer cruelty free um, due to like recent events or stuff I had beforehand. And I am gonna talk about them because I wanna use them up. Massive tangent, I apologize, we'll get to that. Anyway, K Philip Kingsley is cruelty free. This particular one with all the jazziness on it is their rose and lychee scent. They do limited edition scents each year. I believe this was last year's, question mark. The reason I wanna use this up and the reason I'm sort of focusing on using it up is because it's a pre-shampoo treatment, you need to put it on before you get into the shower, duh. So that sounds easy enough, but sometimes my like I can forget and I, if I get out of the habit of using it, I like to use this weekly. If I get out of the habit of using it, it will just sort of, sit there and not really do anything. So I want to get back into the habit of using this weekly. It will be great for my hair. I think it's a fantastic product. I have already gone through a whole one of these and I would still love to have it in my collection even after this is done. But it's I've got to remember that, hey, when you're doing that weekly deep clean of your body, pop this on in your hair beforehand. When I'm doing a hair mask, this is great for a pamper evening. If you're doing a bunch of face masks, why not pop this hair mask on too? Anyway, so I, I imagine I will finish this by the end of the year. I mean, it's a lot of hair product, but I think I can do it. That reminds me, sorry. I will get through these products, I do promise. I have picked products which, you know, I don't wanna set myself up for failure that I can either hit pan or use up, but I also didn't wanna go for easy wins either. So I haven't picked like a mascara or concealers because I know that I'll finish those through. Did I say that about shower gel? Wow. Moving on. So I've got two skincare products. This product here is probably the product out of all of these ones that has been in my collection the longest. So that's why I want to talk about it. This is the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Gel. You, it says on the back that you can have this for two years. I know for a stone cold fact that I have definitely had this more than two years. It still smells fine. I think like with like these cream products, you can tell when it's reach the point of no return and I don't think that's at it yet and this is also the product that is I'm the closest to using up 
and I just need to just crack on and do it. I think this is gonna be like my nightly moisturizer after I popped all my other skincare products on, I'll pop this on. So also, Clinique are not cruelty free. So again, this isn't the type of product I would wanna pass off to anybody because it's almost done. This is twofold, like this has hung around for too long and it no longer aligns with what I'm trying to do in my life. So I'm gonna say goodbye to this one and then not repurchase it. And for the other skincare product, it's almost like the opposite, but kind of the same. What do you mean, Alice? What do, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> Woo! So this is the Dr. Jot Ceramidin Liquid. I got this from TK Maxx some point last year and basically I bought this product to kind of be like my morning skincare product so I've been really slack with that I've just been maybe running over some micellar water over my face and calling that it before putting on makeup but I am trying to be a little bit more diligent and a little less lazy when it comes to that sort of thing so I want to reintroduce this and it, the reason that I picked this is because it's like a one-stop shop to sort of prepping your skin for makeup again like the Clinique product this is something that I bought before committing to having just solely cruelty free products. So again, I wanna use it up and get it out of here, not repurchase. I'm about halfway through, I'm about here. So I definitely will be able to finish this up, but I just wanna get it out of my collection and be done, be done with it. Rightio, so the rest is makeup. Shall we go in order of application? I think that makes the most sense, right? Anyway, so starting with e.l.f. This is their Poreless Putty Primer. I bought this to see what the hype was about. I literally, I was, it was on my radar, obviously, because I don't live under a rock. I had like, all I would see is like empty displays. And I, once I was just in my local boots and I saw one, this one, just chilling. And I thought, it's a sign. Let's pick it up and use it. This was a few months ago. Elf are vegan and cruelty free. And I don't know if you'll be able to see in this light, I can bring it up to you. I have used a good amount of it, but I must admit I've not, really critically analyzed it. I've just kind of like shoved a bit on my face and not really played about with it, which sounds strange for a product that I've, I've just, yeah, I've just not really paid attention. I definitely will be able to use this up by the end of the year. I don't hate it, but I just haven't really paid attention to what it does. So I really want to A, get back into blogging. Hey, now's the perfect time, we're all set inside. And I think that this is gonna be one of the things that I review. That's part of the reason why I bought it to see if the hype was real. And yeah, so I'm gonna start really paying attention and seeing if I like it. So I will let you know when I've reviewed it and tell you my thoughts. Also with this type of product, you kind of don't want it sitting in your collection for too long either. So I figured that this would be something that I could easily use up. Next up, I have a foundation slash skin tint. The Glossier Skin Tint to be precise. I use the shade G11 and this is a perfecting skin tint. I love this base. I love it so much and I'm gonna tell you for why because I know a lot of people don't get it, which sounds rude. <laughs> I don't mean it like that. I mean it like, it's a super duper light coverage, which is not what everybody is after. But I also don't think that Glossier are trying to necessarily work for everybody. Um, why I like it is it gives me the power to be more selective with where I put on a concealer. So I would be able to have lighter makeup on my face, so my face is more comfortable, my skin's breathing more. Um, I just really like the light veil that it gives. It works wonderfully with the stretch concealer and also G11 for me is like my perfect skin tone. I've never had a product match my skin so well as this. So. I really like it and I would happily repurchase it. Why I sort of wanna make sure that I use it is because it works so well with the stretch concealer and I'm almost out of that. I wanna continue using it with other concealers and see how that works out too. I think it's brilliant and I love it. So it's my daily base. When my, when my skin's playing up, I will use a heavier coverage all over, which I'm actually doing today, lol. For like every day, like good skin days, this is brilliant, I love it. And in a similar vein, I have the Wowder by Glossier. Again, I feel like they both offer a nice light veil of cover together, and then with a concealer, you can really make more detailed decisions about where you want more coverage, whether it's under your eyes or on spots. Um, I've used about two thirds of it. So I think I would be able to finish this up. Um, and I think they go really well together. So I will continue to use these as one. I'm currently using the shade light medium. I've had this longer than the skin tint. I had this before they changed their shade and extended their shade range. So I'm gonna continue using them, love them. They're my daily base for when my skin's being wonderful. Although I do have the bridal on today. I do have most of these products on today to kind of show you what they look like. Moving on, I have a bronzer to talk about and I've had this in my collection for a little while and I've just never really started using it. Uh, and then 
I did start using it and quite liking it. And then they stopped being cruelty free. That's right, it's Physicians Formula. This is their light butter bronzer. It smells so much of coconut, like it's obnoxious, quite frankly. It is a nice matte light bronzer, but very recently, I wanna say within a month, they've, they, them and Wet n Wild are owned by the same company and they've started trading those brands in China. So I no longer wanna support it. I will no longer buy products from them, but I'd already like started making a dent in this. So. I just wanna use it up, get it out of my collection. And so that is what I'm gonna do. I do have a couple cheap products. I kind of like made these one because I've already hit pan on both of them. And I like having both of them in my makeup bag at the same time because they work well together or separately. What I'm talking about is these two cheap products from Colourpop. <laughs> Um, so I love Colourpop, I think they're great. And these are their Super Shock, um, that's not say shadows, wrong. These are their Super Shock blushes. Um, I've got it in Thanks for the Memories and Quarters. I really like them both. As I said, they work well together if I wanna sort of layer my blush up. I like quarters for transitional seasons. I just think this works well with like deep oranges and rusts and browns and stuff. And then Thanks for the Memories, I think works really well for spring and summer because it's really peachy and punchy. This is a bit more of a deeper orange, whereas this is a bit more peachy pink. And I just think they're both brilliant. And with these type of products, because they are cream products, I find that if you continue to use them, they will last the entire product. But if I had them sitting in a drawer, they would dry up. I do really like them and I will have happily use them up and yeah I just don't want them to go for, to waste because I have had their super shock shadows before and when I've stopped using them for a long period of time they've dried up so I don't want that to happen with these because I think they're brilliant products and deserve to be used all the way up. I do have an eyeshadow palette, would you believe it, which is probably the bravest thing that I'm talking about. It's the NARS Wanted palette which again NARS are not cruelty free, womp womp. So uh, that's part of the reason why I just wanna get it out. Cause like there's some eyeshadow palettes I think I'm just gonna pass on to friends and family. Whereas this one, I think I can use up this year. I've already hit pan on this like bone color. Um, I don't think I'll be able to use these two colors up. It's the black and like a greeny gold, but literally every other color I would use on a daily basis, like a mix and match on a daily basis. So I think it's definitely very doable. The palette's really nice. It's limited edition. So I don't think even if you did wanna get hold of it, I don't think you can, but just sort of for like daily looks like going to work or whatever, I'm happy to use this up. And I think it's a real shame that NARS are no longer cruelty free. But yeah, cause they literally used to be my favorite brand. It's a shame, it's a, it's a crying shame. But anyway, yeah, all these colors, like the reds, like I would use a bright red fairly regularly. I think I've got that on my eyes today. I just, yeah, I don't know. I just think actually this for me, this is what like a neutral palette looks like. So I definitely think that I should be able to finish it up, which is exciting and just get out of the collection wash that brand right out of my hair. Anyway, last but certainly not least, I have the lipstick that is on my lips. This one right here, it is by Beauty Pie. It is their matte lipstick in Cowboy Nude, which is, as I said, this color, but it's sort of a nice deep brownie hue. I've been reaching for this a lot recently and I just figured, actually, do you know what? Just continue using it, girl. It's very versatile. It's got like a nice, a slightly deeper, slightly brownie, but a nude effectively. And I just think it works really well with my aesthetic. So yeah, I just figured what I find with like lipsticks, I'll like go through a phase and then stop using them. Whereas actually I'm just gonna power through and see this one down to the nubbin. I've got a little while yet, but I've also got to the end of the year. So I definitely think I'll be able to do it anyway. I would love to hear from you what products you have recently been loving, any rediscoveries that you've got, any recommendations that you might wanna throw my way. I'd love to hear from you down below. I hope you are all keeping sane and happy and safe. And I look forward to hearing from you and I shall see you soon. Bye.